In this video, we will take a photo together with some style and do neural style transfer to get something that looks like this, this, maybe like this, or this, depending on what you like the most. Now let's roll that intro and let's get started with the code. Alrighty guys, so I will do a summary of the theory behind NST or uh, neural style transfer uh, before we get started with actually coding it. And for more detailed explanations, I will also link a resource in the description of lectures with Andrew Ng. Uh, so I'll try to explain the relevant parts and watch Andrew Ng if you want more details. So let me just uh, bring out my PowerPoint. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to take a pre-trained network and the one we're going to take is the VGG19 network. And uh, check out my VGG implementation from scratch if you want to learn more about the network uh, in depth. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this network and we're going to freeze everything in the network so that so that the, the network weights will not change. And so your reaction might be, well, what? Uh, why? And uh, yeah, so it can be a, quick, uh, a bit confusing because this method of uh, NST is quite different from how we normally do things. So normally we would just send in some input, we would get some output, and we just want the network to manipulate its weight so that it can learn a good representation given the input. So let me explain how this is different. So the idea is that we have three things. So we have the original image, we have the style image, and then the generated image, which is going to be initialized as noise. Uh, and then through training, we want the inputted generated image to become the original image with the style of the style image. So as you can see, this is very different from how we normally do things because we are now changing the input rather than the weight. All right, so you might be saying, I get that we're trying to manipulate the input, but how do we do that? How do we do so that the generated image becomes a combination of the original and the style image? And if you're asking that, then that's a great question. So we're going to take those three image inputs and we're going to send them through the VDG network separately. And uh, here it says VDG 16, uh, but let's just pretend it's uh, VDG 19. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove all of the uh, fully connected, the dense layers at the end. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take the output from some specific comb layers. And in the paper, they say the five comb layers, uh, comb 1, 1, uh, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, 1, and 5, 1, where the first number changes after it has gone through a pooling layer. All right, so we're going to do that for every of the three inputs. So we're going to have three times output of five com layers. And all of those com layers are going to have a channel, a height, and a width. So what we're now going to do is we're going to take those three times five com layers. We're going to send them through a cost function or a loss function. And so let's take a deeper look at the loss function. Uh, the total loss is going to be a combination of, so the total loss is just going to be some hyperparameter alpha times the content loss. And then we're going to add another hyperparameter beta times the style loss. And so C here stands for content or original image, G for the generated image, and S for the style image. So that's just the total loss. Let's take a let's look at uh, those two loss in more detail. So the content loss is just going to compare the the content image or the original image with the generated image, and it's going to do that by simply take the norm for every layer. So A st here stands for the output of one of those. Uh, five conv layers, and L stands for, you know, which of those conv layers, and then C for the content and G for the generated. So to have a loss function that captures the style of an image is a bit more tricky. So the question is really, how do we capture the style of an image? And this is something that they don't explain that well in the paper, and there's been papers after the original NST paper uh, that tried to go in depth of how we actually capture style. Uh, but let me just tell you what they did. So they formed these uh, gram matrices uh, for the generated and the style image. And uh, don't let the notation scare you here. Uh, really, I think the code is going to be a lot clearer. But essentially, the gram matrix is simply that we multiply the output from a comp layer with its transpose. So that's all. And uh, 
we do that for the, uh, we obtain the gram matrix for the generated uh, G and then this style S. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to subtract those two and take the sum over all the element and, and that's the style loss. So this was a quick recap. I think if you're confused about the style loss or anything like that, it's going to be a lot clearer when we start coding. Um, so let's just get started with that. So I've copied in the imports and uh, so we just have torch, uh, NN, optim, and then we have uh, from pill import image and this is going to be used to load the image. Uh, or I guess images and then we're gonna have transforms so that we can convert the image to a tensor and Then we're gonna have models to be able to load the uh, VGG 19 and then save image so that we can uh, Store the generated image at the end. So let's just start with um, let's see. Let's do model equals uh, models dot VGG 19 and then pre-trained equals true and then dot features so this is going to get us all of the conv layers. So we're just going to uh, print model. So when we print a model, we get something like this. And what we need to figure out is which corresponds to the, you know, the one, one up to the five, one. And if you remember the number changes when we do a max pool. So we're first going to take just the first one, right? That's the one, one. Then we see that we have a max pool right here. Uh, and so this one would be the two, one. All right, so right now we're going to take the zero, we're going to take the five, and then let's see, we're going to take, after we get another max pool right here, so we're going to take this one, this would be the three one, and then let's see, we have another max pool right here, so we're going to take four one, that would be 19, and then max pool right here, so that would be 28. So that's just, you know, checking which comp layers do we want, and what we want is, uh, so we want to have uh, zero, we want to have five, right? Zero, five, and then we want 10. And let's see, we want 19. And then the last one we want is, uh, is 28. And so really all of the, the other ones uh, after this one, after the 28, those are really unnecessary because uh, we're not going to use those in our loss function anyways. So just just uh, keep that in mind. And so what we're going to do is we're going to create another class. And we're going to class VGG. We're going to inherit from the NN module. We're going to define init of self. And then we're just going to call the super on VGG self uh, and then as normal dot in it. And so what we're going to do is self dot chosen features. And we're just going to take uh, that thing right there. So those are the features that we're going to take, right? They correspond to the comp one, one, two, one, three, one, four, one, five, one. And then we're going to do self dot model equals models dot VGG 19. Uh, and then pre train equals true. And then we can do dot features as we did. And we can just go up to 29 so that we just have inclusive the 28th and then remove the rest because they're not going to be used in the loss function anyways. Moving on with the forward, uh, define forward of self and X. Uh, we're going to store features in an empty uh, array or list. So those are going to be, you know, the relevant features for the, for the chosen features that we've chosen right here. We can do for layer number dot uh, comma layer in enumerate self dot model, uh, and we can send in um, x through that layer, and the output we're just going to call x. So we're going to x equals layer of x, and we're going to check if string of layer num is in uh, self dot shows and features, then that means that we want to store it right. And then we can do features dot append uh, x. And remember, this will be after the output from that comp layer. And lastly, uh, we just want to return uh, features. Okay, so that's sort of our, our modified VGG in a way. And then we're gonna create a function that can load an image. We're just gonna send in some image name. We're gonna do image is image dot open and then image name. So that, that's when we use the uh, pill library. 
and then image equals um, and then we're going to do Im image equals loader of image. This, um, this is going to make sense soon. We haven't defined it yet. And then we're going to do unsqueeze uh, zero. And we unsqueeze zero because we will need to add an additional dimension for the uh, essentially the batch size, right? Which is just going to be one. So we're just going to add that dimension by unsqueeze. And then we're going to return image dot to device. All right, so we haven't defined device or the loader, and we're going to do that now. So we're going to do div, uh, device equals uh, torch.device and then uh, CUDA. CUDA if torch.cuda is available, uh, else we're just going to use the CPU. So this is quite standard. And then we're going to specify the image size, and we're going to just um, pick 356. So, you know, if if you have a CPU, you would probably want to take this as a lower number. And if you have a really good graphics card, you can, you know, if you can train it on a larger image. The only thing that's going to take is it, it's going to take a longer time. And we don't want it to take that long. So then we're going to do a loader is transforms.compose. And we're going to do first the uh, transforms.resize. So one very important thing that I don't think I mentioned is that you need to have all of those images as the same size, right? Otherwise, you won't be able to com to uh, subtract them when we compute the loss. So everything needs to be the same size. So we're going to resize to image size, comma, image size. And then we're going to do transforms dot to tensor. And one thing you could also do is uh, I'm going to comment this because I'm not actually going to use it. But you could do transforms.normalize and then, um, you know, the mean and the standard deviation. And what you would pick here is uh, you would pick the, the mean and the standard deviation that VGG19 was originally trained, trained on. Um, so you would find those values of the mean standard deviation and you would put them there. Uh, and, I, and I did that originally when I, when I implemented NST. But I then tried it without and got pretty good results. So, you know, I guess if we want to keep it as simple as possible, then if it works without it, then why keep it? Um, but I think it's going to be, it can improve the the result a little bit. But in my opinion, it just um, isn't wor worth it. Uh, because one thing you need to do is if you do this, then you would need to normalize it back in the end. Because the colors would all be screwed up since you are... Uh, normalized by these values. Anyways, uh, we're then going to load the original image. So we're going to original image, load image. And then we're going to take um, in the same folder as the file, I have Anna Hathaway, and then dot PNG. And then the style image is going to be load image. And we're going to do style dot JPEG. So, you know, you can choose whatever files you want as the as the original and the style. That's just the two, the example that we have here. In the uh, in the explanation of NST, I did as we um, we chose to generate as a image of noise at the beginning. And you could do that. You could do uh, generated equals torch dot random. And then uh, you would do original uh, image dot dot shape. And then you would do device equals device and requires grad equals true. Although um, I found that doing a copy of the original image was better. So we can do, and I think this is this is quite common. I've seen a lot of other people do this as well. And that they do the original image and then they do clone and then dot requires grad and then true. Um, and remember, this requires grad equals true is essential because we're going to freeze the network. So the only thing that can change is the generated image. Um, but yeah, choosing the original image and cloning it from the beginning uh, makes it a little bit faster. And uh, yeah, I got better images from doing that. But of course, you can try using the noise if you want to do that. Uh, and then we're going to choose the hyperparameters. So the total steps, and we're going to pick to some, I don't know, 6,000. We're going to pick the learning rate at 0.001 and alpha. Uh, so we're going to set alpha and beta. Those are the hyperparameters that are going to be multiplied with their respective loss of the content 
and the style. Now, the implementation I did uh, is a little bit different from the original paper in that they had these normalization constants where they, uh, and I didn't show this in the explanation, but they sort of divided with the with the channel, number of channels and the number of the, the height and the width when they computed the loss. And so these alpha and beta values are different from, from the ones I chose. Uh, and so if you're, if you, this is just if you're reading the paper. Anyways, we're gonna do alpha equals one. So this is for the content loss. And then beta is 0.01. So this is essentially, you know, how much style do we want in the image? These are just hyperparameters. And it took a little bit of tinkering around to see what works and what doesn't. Uh, and these are values that I found to be, um, to, to just work. So it, they are a good start. And also I believe that if you tinker more with these, you can do a lot better than what I did. I just didn't wanna spend too much time, you know, changing these hyperparameters. So we're gonna do optimizer equals optim.adam. And here we would do, normally do model.parameters, right? Now we're gonna do generated, right? The image, because that's what Adam is gonna try to optimize. And then we're gonna just send in the learning rate. And then we're gonna do four um, step in range of total steps. And that's how many times the image is gonna be modified. Um, and let's see. So first we need to send in each of the three images through the VGG network. So we're gonna do generated um, features is model of generated. Let's see, did I get the model here? Yeah, so actually here we need to do model equals uh, VGG and then dot to device and then we're gonna do dot eval, so to freeze the weight. Now we can send that in. So we're gonna do the original image, let's see, original image features. We're gonna do model of the original image and then the style features, we're gonna do model of style image. And remember, we're gonna get a list here of five, the, the output from five different comm layers. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna define some style loss and some original loss, right? The content should probably write this as content loss. Uh, let's just keep original loss. And then we're gonna set those both to zero. We're, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna iterate through all of the features for the chosen layers. So how we can do that is we can do for generated feature, um, ori original feature, and then the style feature in, and then we can do zip uh, generated features, and then original image features, and then style features. All right, so these will be everything from all of the five com layers, and we're just taking sort of the first, uh, we're taking the first, so com one one. We're taking that for the generated features, the original image and the style features. Uh, but we're gonna iterate through all five of them eventually. And then the first thing we're gonna do here, so we're gonna do batch size, uh, channel, height, height, width. It's just gonna be the gen feature dot shape. Uh, remember also, this is gonna change the better, depending on which comm layer block we're looking at. So it's important to take it for every block. And then we're gonna do original loss, uh, plus equals torch.mean of generated feature minus the original feature, uh, and then raise that to two. So again, torch.mean, I think uh, when I did the explanation, we just sum them together, something like that, and I, I guess multiply by one half. And again, this doesn't really matter that much. Uh, we're anyways gonna multiply the original loss with some value alpha. So um, if we multiply by one half here, or if we take the mean, the only thing that's gonna differ really is the the um, hyperparameter alpha. So uh, don't worry too much about that. Uh, we're just gonna take the mean and we're gonna, the important thing is that we subtract the generated feature with the original feature. And then the next thing we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna uh, compute the uh, gram matrix. So we're gonna do that for the generated and the style. So let's do G and we're gonna do gen feature dot view. We're gonna do channel and then height times width, all right? So remember, the um, the shape of it is batch size, channel height and width, but the batch size is just one, right? We're just sending in one image. So then we can dot view channel, and then we can uh, to, uh, 
you know, put together those two dimensions to form height times width. And uh, what we can do then is we can do dot mm, so matrix multiply with gen feature dot view, and then again channel height times width, and then dot transpose. So that's what I said previously in that, you know, this is going to come out pretty easy. So this should be like that. So this has come out pretty easy. And, um, you know, there's still the interpretation of what is this exactly doing. So here we're multiplying every pixel value uh, from each channel with every other channel uh, for the gen uh, the generated features. Uh, and we will end up having shape channel by channel. And this is then uh, later on going to be subtracted with the style gram matrix. And I guess you can view it in that the gram matrix is calculating some sort of correlation matrix. Uh, if, the, if the pixel colors are similar across the channels of the generated image and the style image, then that sort of results in the two pictures having similar style. But exactly why that is the case is not very clear. So we'll continue with calculating the uh, gram matrix for the style. So we're going to do a equals style uh, feature dot view. And then we're going to do channel height times width matrix multiply style feature dot view channel height times width and then dot transpose. Now that we have the gram matrixes, we can do style loss uh, plus equals torch dot mean of G uh, minus A and then uh, element wise raised to two. And then after that, after those five com blocks, we can do total loss is alpha times the original uh, loss plus beta times the style loss. And so now that we have the total loss, we can just do um, loss dot backward on that one. Uh, and but before we do that, let's do optimizer zero grad uh, total loss dot backward and also um, optimizer dot step. And then we could do, let's say, if step uh, is modulus 200 is zero, then we can do print total loss and we can also do save image of generated. And let's just store it as generated.png. And that's really everything we need. So we've set up, you know, the training loop, um, all the hyperparameters, uh, we've loaded the images. So uh, let's try and run this and uh, hopefully it works. So here's the folder that I have it in. And uh, we have the style image, we have the original image and then the generated right here. And we can sort of see that it's forming. Uh, so this is just after 200 steps. Uh, I'll let it run for a little bit more and we'll see how it looks like. All right, so it takes a while to run and I'm kind of impatient, uh, but you know, this is how it looks like now. And if you run it more, then I'll show you what it's gonna look like. So I'm gonna stop this one and let's bring out that again. So if we run that for longer, it's gonna turn out to look something like this. Nice. Um, and uh, those are the images that I showed you uh, in the beginning of the video. And so the different styles I chose are just eight different styles and I trained on each of them and uh, this is how it, it, they look like. And so I think if you train them for longer, they look even better. And I think if you tinker with the hyperparameters, they'll also end up looking better. Also, if you increase the, the resolution, that's also gonna make them look better, obviously. Uh, but this is sort of the basics of neural style transfer and uh, hopefully conveys the the most uh, essential parts. And uh, we can delete this line right here. Just noticed it. And uh, so hopefully this video was clear. Uh, if you have any questions, then leave them in the comment section below. Uh, thank you so much for watching the video and I hope to see you in the next one.